Hello again, Toby Kohler here, Mayo Men's Health Minute, Rochester, Minnesota. Today's video will cover penile implant preoperative preparation the day before surgery. All right, so here is the last minute checklist that you want to make sure you've covered uh, the night before surgery. Uh, first of all, uh, recall that you are not to eat or drink after midnight the night before surgery. This includes anything, potato chips, chicken McNuggets, uh, whatever it is. Uh, you can drink a little bit of water with medications if you're going to take those. Other than that, everything else is off limits. Uh, you also want to make sure you have an updated history and physical performed within 30 days of the surgery. This is really standard for most hospitals uh, and surgeons around the country. Basically, you have to have medical clearance to make sure that you're at low risk to have the surgery performed. Next, you want to have a plan in place to figure out what to do with your medications. Now, uh, typically what you'll do in your history and physical appointment or your preoperative clearance appointment is come up with an exact strategy uh, to know which medications you are going to take and which ones you're not going to take the morning of surgery. If you're diabetic, uh, again, your plan for your insulin, etc. is going to change because you're not going to be eating, so you want to make sure you have that all straightened out. Write down any questions that you have uh, in the days preceding uh, the surgery so you can ask your surgeon about them the morning of. Also remember that you need to arrange for transportation home, whether you have the surgery done on the same day and go home that day or go home uh, overnight. Uh, it is imperative that you have a driver because A, you're going to be sore, B, you're going to be on pain medications and it will not be safe to drive yourself. You're also going to want to bring loose-fitting clothing to wear home because most men are discharged home with the device partially inflated, and so uh, if you have the wrong type of clothing, that would get uncomfortable. Finally, if you do have a CPAP machine, which you use, bring that with to the hospital as well. So this slide basically covers uh, general logistics for all surgeons. The next slides are going to be specific to my practice. All right, so if you decide to get surgery with me, you're going to call the number on the slide after 8.15 p.m., uh, the night before surgery, and they will tell you exactly when you need to arrive at the hospital. I want you to shower the morning of surgery and just use regular soap and water. You don't have to use anything fancy, and then do not shave the area. Uh, you actually put yourself at higher infectious risk if you shave as opposed to we do it by using clippers in the operating room. Next point, if you're on aspirin, take your aspirin the morning of surgery with a sip of water. I never have my patients hold aspirin uh, just because it, I don't believe it really adds to the bleeding risk. And there is a risk to stopping aspirin because you're on it for a good reason, typically to prevent heart attacks. Regarding other blood thinners like Plavix, Coumadin, or Eliquis, that kind of thing, I do do the surgery on these medications, but a lot of times it comes down to a risk-benefits discussion with either myself or your history and physical provider to figure out what's going to be best for you. If we do the surgery on those medications, we obviously keep your uh, heart attack risk and stroke risk down low. We have a slightly higher risk of having problems after the surgery, uh, but it's very, very low. So like I said, I do do a lot of the surgeries on full anticoagulation. Okay, so you, now you've gotten the surgery, what should you expect uh, post-procedurally the morning after, or the day after that is? Well, you will have a urinary catheter in place, okay? And this is going to be removed before you go home, but you are going to be required to urinate on your own before you can go. Again, if you have urinary symptoms before you get your penile implant, make sure you get these addressed or talk to your physician about them, because the most common complication after these surgeries is urinary retention, men not being able to urinate, because I didn't address your urinary symptoms before this surgery. In my hands, you also have a wound drain, which is in place, that will be removed before you leave. Uh, the surgical site will be dressed with a mummy wrap. It basically is a large uh, compressive dressing around the entire surgical site, uh, and the device will be about 70 to 80% inflated. Now, we will remove the catheter and the drain and leave that uh, dressing in place. At the 48-hour mark, you can remove this dressing on your own. It's important to note that you will have pain in the scrotum, penis, and lower abdomen where the reservoir was placed. Now, we do everything in our power to mitigate that pain. We use long-acting uh, injections into the scrotum. We give you narcotics. Uh, but you should have a good understanding of the pain medication regimen that is written for you and that know that you can alternate between the narcotic pain medications you're given, Tylenol if it's not already in the narcotic, and ibuprofen-like medications. Uh, I recommend my patients take ibuprofen 800 milligrams three times a day as long as their kidney function is okay. 
As always, it's always better to call with questions if you are unsure uh, rather than wait uh, and you know have something progress. As always, I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you have any questions, you can call us on the number on the slide or email us at ipp at mayo.edu. Until next time, Toby Kohler signing off.